Hello, my name is Ashley Dean and I'm an extension specialist for field crop entomology at Iowa State University and I am also the coordinator for the Regional Corn Rootworm Adult Monitoring Network, which is probably what brought you all to this video here today. With this video, I hope to provide a short and updated tutorial on how to enter data into our online data entry system for the Trapping Network. So the first step would be to navigate to the web page where you can enter data, data, right? So many of you may be participating in a trapping network through maybe Iowa State University or a similar organization and perhaps they gave you a direct link to the data entry website and that is great. Um, however, for some of you, you'll need to navigate to that page at some point and the best way that I can think of to do that and the easiest way to do that is to go to rootwormipm.org in your web browser and then once you're on this page you can go over to the adult trapping network tab and right here at the top this big rectangle right here is actually a direct link to our data entry website so once you're on this page you'll see that there are a lot of tabs and you can browse through these and see um, the different maps and stuff that we have available. You can also read through the instructions on the instructions tab, um, or if you need a refresher, you can always refer back to this instead of the video. But today, what I'll talk through is um, the instructions. We'll go through it um, with this screen recording. And so we'll, we'll start that by going to the trap data entry page. So once you make it to this page, um, this is our application and you can just click OK here in the corner and you'll see that there are already a lot of dots on the map and that's because we've been doing this for a couple of years now. So um, all the folks who have participated have already put dots on the map. And so if that includes you, right, if you've already done this before and you intend to go back to the same field this year, um, you can just navigate to your dot and um, put in the new field information for this year and then uh, start submitting your weekly trap counts. However, if you're new to this or um, perhaps you're putting a new dot on the map for a new field that you haven't monitored before, you can, uh, you can put your dot on the map in, in a few different ways. So you can use the search bar up here at the top to find the address for your field or if you have GPS coordinates, you could type those in and it'll take you right to your field. You could also just pan around the map, zoom in, find the field uh, where you are. So uh, we'll say, we'll just kind of go toward Ames, which is where I am today. So let's say we have a, a field here, we can find it on the map that way. Or if you're on a desktop computer or a mobile device that has location enabled, you can go over to the left side of your screen here. There's kind of a bullseye icon on the left-hand side. We can click that and it should take us directly to where we are. So mine didn't quite do a good job, but we'll just use this as our site today. So if we zoom in, um, this is where I'll, I'll put our test site for today, but you can use that location feature if you're standing in the field or if you're close to the field, you can use that location feature. Before I put the dot on the map, I just wanted to say that if you have some privacy concerns and you don't wanna put the dot in the middle of your field, um, you can certainly still put the dot on the map. You can put it at the nearest intersection. Um, you can put it in the nearest town. Just put it anywhere that makes sense to you that you uh, feel good about in terms of privacy, but also um, that you can remember and find later. Um, and so along with that, I highly recommend that people give their trap sites a unique name, something that makes sense for you that you can identify it later uh, when you come to find it. So. Um, with that, when you go to put a dot on the map, what you want to do is go down to the bottom here. You'll see that there are three, uh, three different buttons here. The one we want is the edit button. 
So when we click on that, we get a little pop-up. And this yellow dot here, if we select it and it's highlighted in blue, that means that we're ready to put a dot on the map. So I'll put it here. Then it comes up with a new pop-up, and this is where we give it a name. So for today, I'll put Ashley's Test Site 2, because I already have one on the map. So we'll make this the second one. And then we also need to know how many traps you will be monitoring at this site. So if you have a transect of four traps, which is what the folks in the Iowa uh, rootworm trapping network will do, uh, we would put four, but if you have five, six, seven traps, you would just put however many traps you plan to monitor weekly at the site. And then we need to exit out of this editing window. So we, e we exit completely out and then once we're done with that, um, you can leave this dot here after you know exactly where your field will be, or you can immediately go to it and you can enter your field information. So uh, there will be two surveys that everyone needs to fill out. One is the field information survey, which is the only one that you can see right now. Um, the field information survey is mandatory for you to fill out. It will hold uh, your contact information, which won't be visible to the rest of the people in the network, um, but the contact information will allow us to send you emails with just a summary of the data that you're entering. So that's new this year. Um, we have an automatic uh, email that goes out to you after you enter all of your data so that you also have a record of the data that you entered. Um, and then the other one will be weekly trap counts. And you'll see that you can only access that survey after you fill out your field information. So if we are ready to enter our field information, we just click on that link. It'll open up a new tab in our browser and it's called the field information survey. So you'll need to fill out all of the fields that have a red asterisk next to them. So I will just quickly fill these out. And we want to make sure that our email address is correct because that is what will be uh, used to send a summary of our data entry. So I'll say that my traps are affiliated with Iowa State University. We're in the United States and we're in Iowa. So you'll notice that this is a pretty limited list of states. So if you are participating from a state that's not on this list, please let me know because we can get that added pretty easily um, if you're not on this list. And then we'll just say that we are in Story County, Iowa, where Ames is located. We'll say that the first traps went up last week, so seven days ago. We are using Trace Farrakhan AM traps. We're trapping in corn. And then when you select corn, it will ask you what hybrid has been planted in that field. Um, it's not a mandatory field, but if you can provide it, that's, that's usually pretty helpful. It also wants to know what BT trait packages are in the hybrid. So, um, if you have corn rootworm BT traits or not. And then if you know what those are, um, you can select those. So we'll say that um, ours is something like smart stacks. And then it asks if this field is in continuous corn production. If you say no, it will ask you the previous crops for the uh, previous two years. But if you say yes, it'll just ask you how many years that field has been planted to corn. So we'll just say that this has been corn for three years. You can tell us if the crop was irrigated or not. And then the last few questions, we would just like to know if the field has, has a history of rootworm issues. So we'll say we have a lot of beetles and we have goosenecking lodging, but you can select as many of these as you'd like. And if you don't know the field history, you can select that. And then the final question is what rootworm management has been used in the field this year? So um, I already said that we had a BT hybrid, but maybe we had, we also had a soil applied insecticide at planting. I don't expect at the time that you are entering your field information that you would know whether the field is being, um, it, it will have an, a foliar application for adult control of corn rootworms. So uh, we actually, 
built in to the weekly trap count survey whether or not an insecticide has been applied during the season. So you'll see that when I open up the next survey. So once we're done entering our field information, we can submit that survey. We'll close this window. So if I go over to my email, we can see that I got an email from the GIS specialist who created this website and it just um, has a summary of the field information that we just entered into that survey. So um, just so that you guys also have a record of it after the fact. If we go back to our dot, we can see now that since we submitted our field information, we can now see our weekly trap count survey. So we did that on purpose because remember we had to enter the date that our traps were set up. We can't calculate the beetles per trap per day without knowing the trap setup date. So that's why we built that in there. So um, after you enter your field information, which you can do anytime after you set up your traps, you will then come back to this survey, the weekly trap count survey, every week that you enter data. But you don't ever have to come back to this field information survey unless you know you're filling this out next year for the same field. But you only have to do the field information survey one time every year. So now we'll go in, say it's been a week, we'll go fill out our weekly trap counts. And you'll do this however many times you will be checking the traps for the Iowa Corn Rootworm Monitoring Network, we'll be monitoring for four weeks. So we'll come back to the survey four times. So you'll see that it already knows our trap name. It knows the number of traps that we're monitoring. It knows the date that the first traps of the season went up. And then I'll just say that we check the traps today. I can put in the corn growth stage if I'd like to, um, but it's not required. And then for every trap, you will put in the number of western corn rootworm beetles and the number of northern corn rootworm beetles. So for now, I'm just going to fill out all of them as zeros. And then so here's where you can add um, information about whether a foliar insecticide has been applied. Um, so like I said, I don't expect you to know that maybe at the beginning of the season, but if you uh, know that the field has had a foliar insecticide application since your last report, you can tell us about that here. So I will select yes, a foliar insecticide has been applied to this field. And then there's another field for notes. And you don't have to put anything in here, but if there's anything that you wanna say, like a trap um, was destroyed sometime in the last week, that's why I only have three uh, reports instead of four, or um, I wanna tell you what kind of a foliar insecticide was applied, um, you can do any of that in those field observation notes, whatever um, seems relevant to you. And then you just hit submit. And then you're done for the week. And um, in subsequent weeks, so maybe next week, I just come back and I will browse to my dot. Um, so when you come to this page, right, it's zoomed out, but you can browse to your dot. You can do that in the same ways as when you put the dot on the map. Um, and then when we get to our dot, you just skip the field information survey, go straight down to the weekly trap counts, and you can just continue to enter your counts every week. So I hope that tutorial was helpful. I hope the visuals were helpful. Um, and feel free to check out the other features on the website. We have different maps that you can check out up here at the top. We also have an interactive dashboard at the top where you can kind of customize um, the data that you'd like to see. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. I'll put my contact information um, right here so that you know how to get a hold of me if you have any questions. So thank you for following along today and best of luck this summer as you um, monitor for corn rootworm beetles in your field.